Welcome to this talk about binary distributions with, with Yocto. So I'm Michael Donecker, uh, an independent uh, consultant uh, and trainer in AMD Linux. I worked for STMicro, for TI, for Bootlin, which I founded uh, some time ago, and now I have my own company, which is called Root Commit. I'm a contributor to uh, Open Embedded Yocto, the Linux kernel, and the Elixir cross-referencer as well. And what I like is learning and share that knowledge, right? Uh, and I never missed uh, any ELC Europe so far. So for the, for, from the first one in Linz, you remember, Tim? So except yesterday morning, uh, uh, I didn't, uh, didn't do that on purpose. So, uh, yeah, so I've just created my company last week. <laughs> first announced in this very room, you're the first ones to really know. <laughs> Thanks. And I did the most important things like a preliminary, pre preliminary website and a Linux Weekly News subscriptions. So uh, the, the company is ready now, thanks to this. <laughs> uh, the goals are to contribute to, uh, to open source projects, uh, do some technical research and share experience uh, through technical articles and presentations at ELC, typically. <laughs> uh, and uh, also offer some embedded Linux training sessions. And I'm, um, I'm trying to explore innovative uh, teaching techniques uh, to help you remember what you learn, because it's not because you learn something that you remember it. So I'm working on it. Uh, I will share a, a, a review of a very uh, useful book that I'm reading, uh, like in the next days on, on LinkedIn, that will be available. So rootcommit.com, and there we are. So um, I'm a contributor to Yocto and Open Embedded. I actually started with the with the first guys. Uh, if you can ring a uh, bell like Mickey Lauer, Philip Blandol, Kuhn Koy. I don't know. If... Yeah. Kuhn is here. Mickey hasn't been active. In yeah, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> The year is wrong? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course yeah, so thanks. Oops. <laughs> no. <laughs> and yeah, between 2006 and a forgotten day. So, so thanks for Alex, who is like a, a data expert uh, for us. Uh, yes, I got busy with some uh, uh, other projects. And during that time, a build root and manual building were good enough. <laughs> But then I, I got back to Yocto, thanks to a contract we had when I was at Bootlin. Uh, so I, I, I worked as a documentation maintainer for uh, the Yocto project, and it was a nice opportunity to contribute to other parts as well, so I'm really grateful. And also, uh, I'm going, what I'm going to talk about is a, a contract we had with Bootlin. Uh, so the Yocto project got funding from the Sovereign Tech Fund, like it's a, part of the German state, and they, fund, they are funding some open source projects, and it's great because they, 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 they fund some, some uh, projects that really need support uh, or that, 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 that need a push that we wouldn't get from anyone otherwise. So yeah, that's, uh, there was a project to improve uh, binary distro support, and I'm going to take, talk about it. So I don't represent the Yocto project. What I say is my own opinions. Uh, the Yocto project is actually driven by the technical steering committee. I'm just a contributor to it. So the goals of these presentations are to share what I learned during this project about binary distros, and uh, also talk about the recent features that were added to, um, but that are going to be added to Styhead actually the next release. So what I learned. Um, so let's compare binary distros with custom root file systems. That's the old discussion. Um, the binary distros are meant to date, be updated by packages, so you install the package rather than regenerating the image, right? Uh, that's what you do with the custom root file system. You regenerate one new, brand new image and you flash it. Uh, the updates can be very small with binary distros. And when, when root partition should be sufficient, uh, well, with the custom root file system, you update everything at once every time, so it's bigger, of course, and you need uh, like typically two partitions, A and B partitions. One is, that's the active one, and one's the, the next one. Uh, with binary distros, you can remove packages, which is nice, and you can, you can add some as well, uh, thanks to package fees, like in uh, desktop distros, right? Uh, you can't really do that with custom uh, 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 distros that you generate like, uh, as a, an entire partition. It's hard. You know, that's, they're not meant to be modified. You just generate a new image. That, that's the update. Uh, you can, with binary distros, you can also uh, have uh, configuration work uh, at, at 
at runtime, like you can make changes, uh, tweak the, 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 the system by editing configuration files typically. Uh, here for the root file systems that are generated, they are typically customized when you build them, right? Not at runtime. And so the, for the binary distros could be rebooted, uh, updated without rebooting. Well, of course, it's very complicated not to reboot when you update the entire image. So yeah, that's another difference. Okay. Right, so there was someone in the room or, uh, that he or she put really strong pressure on me to, to try other colors for, for my presentation. So I, I eventually relented after getting a beer, uh, a beer bribe yesterday. So here's one. <laughs> uh, so let's compare uh, binary distros and custom root file systems. Uh, again, uh, so typically, um, Binary distros are great for general purpose uh, desktops, of course, uh, servers and cloud distros that are meant to be configured at runtime or general purpose devices. So some, some embedded devices can also uh, work uh, fine when you, you want, well, typically when you want to update the applications, uh, the, the, the root file system independently from the application. So I remember some contacts with, uh, with some, some car makers that wanted to have like a base system that's based on packages updated by the distro vendor and they just want to focus on the applications. With custom root file systems, you uh, essentially uh, have something dedicated. Well, that, that's, that's where they are best, like a dedicated system that does one thing and doesn't, mean, doesn't need to be extended at runtime. Uh, and for also systems for which it's relevant to update them, like make a full validation at uh, every image should be validated. Uh, so you really don't want to end up with a package with a configuration that you haven't tested, which could happen with the binary distros, like some users could have like some packages, but not all, all of them. So you never know exactly in what state they are, right? <clears throat> so let's talk about, uh, of course, uh, OE, Open Embedded and Yocto, uh, and how, what, what how uh, binary distros are, are supported. So the initially, well, that's been like that since the beginning. So I remember uh, OpenMD was created to support the open Zorus uh, distro <laughs> uh, for, for sharp Zorus devices. So that's, that's the uh, initial goal of the project. And then there's, there was this famous angstrom distribution uh, that Kuhn Koi was maintaining. Uh, that was great. I used it quite a lot because it was really convenient. You just get an image from Angstrom, you boot it on your device with your uh, custom built kernel, and there you are. And then you can add as additional packages to it, like corresponding on what, what, what you want to have in your demo, and it just works out of the, out the box. So, uh, yeah, that is, so uh, unfortunately, uh, in, in, in the Veen, apparently, there's an expression uh, if you take streetcar line uh, 71, it means that you're, 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 you're defunct, you're dead. Uh, it's because at the end of uh, seven, uh, Streetcar 71, you have like this, the Veen uh, symmetry. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, Angstrom is defunct. And I actually accept, uh, volunteered for the project to, uh, to revive distributions like Angstrom, which were uh, super useful. I really miss this kind of distribution. So, uh, of course, we, we, we do have support for uh, distributions, so, uh, and uh, binary distributions, uh, of course, uh, are, are supported by Yocto, so that's Pocky, of course, which is the reference distribution that uh, Yocto uses to test uh, everything, all the artifacts, to, I mean, to test uh, open embedded, and so that's what the uh, Yocto project bins, uh, brings. However, if you download the uh, generated images from the Yocto project, they don't, by default, uh, contain uh, package management. So you can't like, uh, you can even run uh, APT or Debian or whatever that's not built in by default. Uh, there's, there's the OE distro, uh, the OE distro that's been started by people like uh, Kem uh, in particular, uh, trying to, uh, to, 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 to revive uh, uh, binary distro uh, with feeds and things like that in the spirit of Angstrom, but it's not, it's, it's, it's it's, the project is not like super active and it's not shipping binaries, neither binaries nor uh, feeds uh, yet, unfortunately. So let's compare uh, yeah, standard distros versus uh, like binary distros versus the, uh, the ones that Yocto can build. So the standard distros are pre-compiled. For Yocto, you, you will build them right from source. You have, of course, an, a limited ability to customize your distribution. Uh, 
I'm talking about uh, Debian and Ubuntu and, and, and all those ones. Uh, with Yocto, of course, you can customize to uh, an, any level you want. Uh, one advantage of those uh, standard distros, though, is that they have like uh, predictable um, security updates uh, that are made available like within days of the disclosure or at, uh, even when the, at the time the disclosure is made. Uh, with Yocto, unfortunately, we don't have that much resources. We, uh, we are doing our best. And of course, the, the Yocto project has resources to commit to publishing uh, updates for security bugs, but it's like in terms of sometimes weeks before they are released and uh, we have some, some, sometimes some CVEs that are open that take time to be resolved uh, just because of lack of resources. Uh, there's commercial support for um, uh, embedded distros uh, and that's also the case for uh, Yocto build ones uh, because, well, like, like Green River is one of them and, and it's part of, it's a member of the Yocto project as well. So if you want to have uh, commercial support, uh, you can get that from uh, companies like, like that, like, like Green River. And uh, another thing is that the Yocto project doesn't ship uh, binary feeds yet, and that's why uh, we are trying to make progress in this direction. But it's, it's not make publishing uh, such feeds uh, officially yet. So how to make your uh, binary distribution using Yocto, the existing features, right? So you have this well-known diagram, right, uh, of how, how uh, the, uh, an image is built and how the package feed is built. So uh, typically images are built from packages. So first you compile it from source, you generate a package and you install the package in the image, or you just gen generate a, a, a package that can be not installed in the image, but provided in a feed that you, that allowing to install the package later, right? So advantages of using binary packages. Uh, so yeah, binary packages can be used to add applications, as I said, to a root file system, that's nice. But they can also be used to remove stuff uh, uh, on a, on a, from a root file system if you have a description of the files. And that's typically what build root can't do. It's, it's good to talk about this rivalry between the two projects. They, nice project, but they, they, uh, and they have some overlap. But in that case, uh, build root is not, doesn't, generate intermediate packages, so it has no knowledge of what was installed in the root file system, and therefore is unable to remove something. When you want to remove something from a build root image, you have to run make clean and, and generate again. Yeah, just because build root doesn't know what was installed. With, with, with open embedded, you know what was installed because you still have the package, so you can, you, you can remove it. So uh, for those who wonder, uh, here's a comparison of the various packaging formats that, that are available. So uh, RPM is for Fedora, Red Hat, uh, Pocky supports it as well. That's the default uh, format, actually package format for, for Pocky. Uh, Debian is for Ubuntu Debian and <laughs> Pocky as well. <laughs> well, it's non default. And IPK is like a, a lightweight version actually of uh, Deb. So the same, almost the same format, you can actually give an IPK package to the Deb command and it won't, the DPKG command and it won't complain. Um, I'll, I'll show you the difference and it's uh, used like open the, by the OpenWRT and Pocky and probably other ones. Uh, so yeah, quickly you have RPM to manipulate packages, uh, DPKG for that packages, and uh, for IPK it's just OPKG, right? Uh, you have a front end that knows about feeds and uh, dependencies, so that's yum. Uh, APT for dev and OPKG for, uh, it, it does everything, right? So I, I, make, I made a quick test generating um, uh, core image minimal and check the size uh, of the uh, of the of the, the the package feed directory and the image and the the winner is actually is actually uh, well you could say the smallest what is that what that you get is with IPK uh, but uh, in terms of image size but uh, because there's the path package management in the image as well, like uh, the, 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 the package manager and the, uh, the, package, the package feed descriptions and things like that. So you may wonder why IPK actually yields uh, b bigger packages than Debian ones. So quick, quick command to, uh, to look at uh, the, the package sizes. So I generated the packages for all types and you can see that the biggest ones is IPK in terms of package size. Uh, and so I extracted the contents of the Debian and IPK um, archives, yeah, uh, with AR-X. And what I get is, I, so you have the same data, but they, they are compressed differently. So ultimately, you can see that uh, IPK compresses with ZST, 
And this, is, this actually makes sense. ZSTD makes sense because it's faster. I mean, it's less compute intensive than, than uh, XZ, which is used by, um, by Debian. And I think it's more uh, friendly for uh, uh, like low-end uh, CPUs. So that's, I, I, that's probably why uh, IPK chose to, uh, to, to use uh, X, uh, ZST, ZSTD by default. But that, that's one of the best compromises in terms of like compression ratio and, and speed. Uh, XZ is pretty slow. So how to choose the package format? Uh, uh, I mean, for the uh, image that you're going to build. So you have to set package classes in your uh, configuration file. So package deb if you want, for example, but you can actually generate package packages for all types. That's fine. And actually, well, if you select multiple types, actually the first, you, you will have packages, all types of packages being generated, but only the, the first setting will be used to generate the image. Like the image will contain, will be uh, generated from the, 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 the first one. You, only, you also need to, um, uh, enable package management because, I, as I said, by default you don't get package management. So you have got an image, but you can't update it because there's no uh, etc something and there's no package manager binaries to do that. So if you want to enable uh, package management at runtime in your image, you need to add uh, package management to image extra features, extra image features. Sorry, and you also, or if you do that from an image recipe, it's going to be image features. Just add package management to it, and that that works. So yeah, you have links here if you want to follow. Um, that goes to the Yocto project documentation about those, those settings. Uh, you want to create a package feed, of course. So they are, they are available in temp deploy, uh, either RPM, deb, or IPK. Uh, when you build an image, they, the, all the, the intermediate packages go, get there as well. Artung, uh, yes, the uh, package indexes don't get generated. Uh, like. You, you have like a feed directory, but it's not usable because there's no index. Like it doesn't tell what back packages are there and what their versions are. So you also need to generate the index. So <laughs> that's, of course, when you do that, like you sometimes forget to run bit big package index. You don't have any index and your feeds don't work. <laughs> and that's the reason why. You can publish, uh, then a pa you want to publish a package feed, of course. Uh, uh, so uh, you, uh, you, want, you, you can copy the time deploy format directory to a web server and serve it from there. Uh, but actually, from development, like if you're just working on your system, uh, the easiest way is actually to run a Python web server directly from the, patch, the package feed directory, like, like, like when showing Python 3 and uh, HTTP.server, and there you have a server. So why, why bother uh, preparing something with Apache that's like for development is great. And then use a package feed. <clears throat> so uh, you will have to configure the package manager to, to let it to let the image know where the uh, the, the feeds are, the feeds uh, the, feed, the feed or the feeds are multiple feeds are possible. So you have like some Yocto variables, uh, bit, yeah, uh, <laughs> bit big variables uh, that you can set, uh, like package feed URIs, package feed based paths, etc. That that specify what the uh, feeds look like. So an example here. Uh, that shows the uh, the base URI, uh, the, 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 the the base subdirectory and the sub subdirectory uh, that you get that you can that you can have, and so given those settings, what you get is like all these those feeds are are, are declared in uh, as available feeds. Like what's, that's what the image will try to to, to query uh, when you run uh, the uh, the package manager commands on the target. So. Um, Something I wanted to mention too is uh, the difference between image contents and package feed contents. So uh, what, what goes into the image is uh, actually what you add to the image install setting. So that's all the packages you want to have in your image, right? So it's just bit big and the image name that generates your image. But then uh, how, how can you have a different package feed that has more packages? So you could just run a bit big and whatever packages you want to build and they will get added to the feed, the, the feed, so you can run bit big hello, bit big world. Uh, bit big world, of course, generates everything. I mean, uh, all the all the uh, pa packages that are defined by the, the recipes that that you have. A quick reference for the package managers. A uh, quick like sh showing how how the the, the 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 files are located. That's nice to have as a reference, right? 
uh, and the commands to uh, to uh, update, like to fetch the, the the list of packages from the repository, like it's DNF update or APT update or, or PKG update, and then you have the commands to uh, either install, remove a package, or check the updates, uh, and then apply the updates. Right. Now it's time to talk about something that's specific to binary distributions. It's the PR uh, value, the uh, package revision. So for example, here you have like uh, 1.0-R0. So 1.0 is like the, the version number for the, for, the, for the recipe. And revision is like after R, <laughs> like zero here. So that's something that helps to uh, apply an update to a package without changing the version number. Like you have a bug fix uh, for a package. Uh, you just apply the bug fix, uh, but you don't want to change necessarily change the, the version number. So build from the same or for, for similar sources, but without bumping up the, the, the version name, like it's a local change that you make. So an example here, for example, you have an application that's, that has like 1.0 uh, version. So the initial revision is zero. Uh, and then you have a bug fix, then the revision will be one. And because the, uh, when, and then you compare the, 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 the whole string, like, version dash uh, revision. And of course, uh, when the zero R1 is bigger than when the zero R0, and this prevails. So uh, the package manager will install the, the, the most recent one, the, 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 biggest, the biggest string, right? So that, that, makes sure, that makes sure that the update prevails, right? And of course, that's not necessary when you, uh, make, a, uh, when you make an update, uh, version number increase, uh, or when you generate just uh, everything from source and you don't have packages, well, whatever is the latest will get built anyway. So th that revision value is really relevant when you, have, uh, when you want to update a binary, uh, replacing the binary by a newer version, and you need to compare versions. So that just really is relevant for uh, uh, Im images with, uh, with packages. Um, so uh, let's talk also about the PR server. So of course you, you need like to manage revisions uh, and there's a service, actually a, pr a process that's started by Yocto when, when it's enabled that will compute the revision for, for, the, for the packages that, that you build. Uh, so when, whenever there's a new output, when you build a recipe, uh, if there's a new hash, ah, oh, that's new. So let's increase the revision. Uh, we don't increase the version number, but we increase the revision so that if you uh, generate a package, a new package, it will prevail over the, the previous one. This also requires to have a proper hash equivalent server to work, like to, to really uh, be able to detect uh, a new, uh, an, an old revision or a new one, right? So that's, that's why. Uh, so you can set the PR server either uh, as a local server. Uh, so you need to set PR server host to a value, whether it's like local, uh, local value, uh, local IP address or uh, a remote one. Uh, and this allows to share uh, this allows to share um, uh, one server amongst multiple builders. So that's, that's handy. If you don't set PR server host, you don't have a PR server at all. Right. Uh, so let's talk about the added features uh, that we added through uh, thanks to the funding uh, from uh, the um, so so Sovereign Tech Fund. So yeah, the, 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 uh, it, it all started from uh, Richard Purdy who who, uh, like, who proposed the, uh, the, the improvements. So the idea is building from source can be a bit uh, challenging sometimes. Well, you start with the default settings, the uh, a default image, uh, if you want to, to support a device, and a default distro, right? Then you have to create, of course, your own layers, your own recipes to, uh, to customize this a bit. Uh, and then, of course, use a reuse a BSP and customize it. So have your own uh, BSP layers for supporting your, your specific hardware. Uh, then you will, uh, of course, customize the distribution, the image, uh, according to your needs. You will uh, debug the system, you uh, debug the applications, and ultimately you maintain the product. So here, there's a quite uh, steep learning curve. Uh, so it takes time to, to get up to <laughs> product maintenance. But once, of course, it's, it's, uh, you're at the top, it's like flat. It's, a, it's like a mesa, so it's nice. Uh, then well, when you reach the, the summit, it's, it's fine, no more climbing. Uh, the, idea, uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, Yocto binary distributions is to make it easier to get started. So you could actually start with a ready-made image uh, for your architectures, like, like we did with, with uh, Angstrom. So just fetch that image and boot it on your board, 
and that's the first nice first a uh, nice first step. And then, of course, you can add a ready. Uh, ready-made packages that are provided through feed to your image. So you, you, you progressively start to, to customize your, uh, your, uh, your, your, the root file system you're booting on. So that's still relatively easy. And then when you want to go deeper, uh, you can uh, move on to uh, adding some custom applications and cu custom packages uh, using uh, the SDK, ESDK, like using DevTool to build specific stuff. Uh, you're still not building, well, you're still, you're building your stuff from source, but you're not rebuilding the entire system uh, from source. So you still rely on the image that's provided uh, by, by, by the, the, the image provider, let's say. And then ultimately, of course, when you really need to tweak things and you really want to, to move to a real product that you want to maintain, you probably have to, uh, of course, comp uh, compile from source and, um, and uh, really fine tune uh, the way the, the, the packages are built and everything. So you ultimately uh, will build from source probably, but uh, at least you get started in a probably easier way. So uh, first thing we did is, uh, I did actually uh, was uh, doing an overhaul of the PR server uh, to, to align it with the uh, code standards of the Ash equivalence uh, server. Uh, so uh, like, like aligning the code, improving, uh, yeah, modernizing, let's say, the, the, the code. That, that was merged in Scarf Gap that, that everyone is using, the LTS release. Uh, a new thing that was added to uh, is adding a read-only mode for the PR server. And this makes it possible to, to uh, actually have a, an upstream distro that can share the PR, uh, its PR information, like a PR server, without having to implement um, authentication like, like what you have in the Ash equivalent server, you can have authentication. Here, just read-only, that's good enough to get started so that we can, the Yocto project can publish uh, uh, like uh, a PR information from its, uh, its auto builder. So it's also always building stuff, and so we could share the PR information from the auto builder and people could use it. So that, that would work. And also uh, another feature that was added is uh, adding an upstream, uh, the, the support for an upstream PR server. So let me explain what it is. And that, that's available, in, that has been merged and that's, that will be in Styhead to be released soon. So essentially that allows to uh, use like a binary distro that Yocto with the Yocto project could, 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 could support, could publish. Uh, so you have an upstream feed that contains what is made available by upstream. You start from a local image that you downloaded, downloaded at some point in the past. And then, uh, well, through the local feed, what you can do is uh, have your own applications, right? So that they are part, they are, they are, they are part of uh, your local feed. So you can install applications from your feed. But you can also, of course, get uh, updates from upstream, like for the, like lib ray, the Ray library. Is, uh, uh, has an update, so we, we, uh, it, we're going to install it because that's, uh, we're using the upstream feed. But you can also, uh, and that's what we want, uh, have uh, an up, uh, a lo the local feed that can override the um, upstream, upstream feed. Like here, for example, for the Asian library, uh, there's um, an R1, a new revision R1 that's available on the upstream feed. We want to, to have something that overrides this. We have like made some changes to the Asian library. so. Uh, uh, we just have to generate a feed with like a revision that prevails over the one upstream. So instead of having uh, R1, we have R1.0. So uh, 1.0 wins over one, right? Same, same thing for the IDO library. So 0.1 wins over R0, right? Uh, another example, if, uh, if upstream has changed for the IDO library, it publishes R1. Of course, we since we made changes to IDO uh, on the local feed, we want to, it, our changes to prevail. So we have to be quick <laughs> and uh, update local uh, quickly so that uh, upstream doesn't uh, prevail for some time. Uh, so we don't want to lose our changes to the IDO library. So we have to uh, notice that uh, upstream has changed and quickly regenerate uh, the package with, package with our, uh, our own changes. So when the zero will prevail over one, right? And similarly, uh, we can still make updates to this one, like IDO. So instead of zero and one, we can have like a, a, a further custom updates. Sorry, uh, so further custom updates to that that package. Uh, so we 
this mechanism of the upstream server uh, feed is, makes it possible to have like a local server that's aware of the changes upstream and generates a revision that's more recent that's uh, the upstream one. That's the use case that we are targeting. So let's try to understand the revision increasing logic if you want to figure out how it's actually doing. So it's not completely trivial, for example, when the 20 is not is greater than 1.30, the, the, the 3. So we have to compare uh, revisions like with the dots in between. So there's uh, a specific Python function that does the comparing. Uh, if you want to check what, how the uh, revision comparison is expected to work, you can check the, the p-tests that we developed to check that the, to, to check the code of the, the upstream server support, right? Uh, of the or PR server, actually. Uh, so it was really handy to develop the tests during the development of the, uh, the PR server uh, updates. So that, that was really handy to have a, uh, a, a, a bit big cell test at the same time. Really recommend. Uh, to do that, like that's really, really handy. Uh, so the, essentially the revision logic, uh, up, update logic is to uh, make upstream always prevail, that's the idea. No, local, sorry, local prevail. My, my mistake, I will fix it. Local prevail. <laughs> Otherwise, why, 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 why would we bother? Um, and there's another additional feature that was developed in the code. Uh, Richard wanted it. Uh, it's not used yet, but we want that. There, there was some initial support for that, so we wanted to keep it. So there's what is called the history mode. That's not used, but that's the ability to really uh, decrease the PR number in case the, you, you end up generating a patch it, package that was found in the past, like which hash was already found. So you want to downgrade uh, a package. Like the PR server will generate a, a, a number that's older than the current one. And the default one is still the no history mode. Uh, you always, uh, you never decrease the PR number. So even if you end up with a, a hash that was uh, corresponding to a, an earlier version, you, you want the late, you want what was generated to prevail over the previous one. So it, the revision number is increased even though it was already found in the history. Uh, and then <laughs> something I didn't implement at first, but Richard wanted it, and I think it makes sense to be generic. So you could have actually nested upstream servers. So imagine you have upstream zero. It can be the upstream uh, of another uh, PR server, upstream one. So in that case, of course, uh, you have like a revision number that's uh, zero to zero, typically. So that it, this one prevails, and then you can have another uh, upstream server, number two, and then you see the, the, the scheme, and that's, that's how it's implemented. Uh, you can have like nested ones and over and over again. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> I, for, I, um, I forgot to, disable, to to check for infinite loops. So if in the current code, you could have like an infinite loop here, which would be evil, of course. Uh, how to use an upstream server now? Oh, yo, uh, not much time left. Uh, you have to, you can either start the, the um, sorry, uh, yeah, the Bitbeck server. Uh, from the command line specifying an up, uh, upstream server. So it starts a local server, but that talks to an upstream server. You see R, which is the read-only mode, that's new as well. Or you can use the PR server upstream variable uh, that specifies an upstream server, but you still have to use PR server host, so you have to have a local server that talks to an upstream server. So you, it's different from having a remote server, which is not is just a, a remote one, but no upstream one. Uh, another feature that was being developed, uh, it's an OE self-test to, uh, to, to um, allow the auto-builder to actually test to uh, upgrading uh, an older image that was generated before uh, with the fields that were just, just generated by the, the auto-builder. So you can test, test the latest fields uh, and make sure that they uh, successfully update a prior image. So the, the, um, the implementation is, is provided, but uh, I still need some extra work to, se to separate the pokey specific parts uh, to merge that in OE core. Of course, you don't want uh, uh, pokey specific stuff in OE core. So I need to, to split the patch in two parts, but the, the code is out there. And then for future developments, uh, we also worked on defining the scope of the binary distro prototype that the Yocto project could uh, publish when it's ready, like what, what architectures it wants to support and things like that. And uh, Richard and the TSC, the, te the Technical Steering Committee, also worked on uh, specifying uh, what kind of criteria we would, we, we would, we would require to accept like new architectures to be supported, like we, 
like to let the auto builder test uh, the new architectures and things like what we want to support through through the Yocto project. Like yeah, what new platform? What uh, we are, what criteria? Uh, new platforms, new layers could uh, would have to 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 fulfill uh, to be, to be supported by the Yocto project auto builder and like yeah. I have support from the Yocto project. So that, that was defined as well. You can have a look. A missing feature uh, in binary distributions that's quite ugly is uh, we are missing the ability to, uh, when you generate a system and we install a package update, we are missing the, the ability to update the SPDX description of the, um, of the system. So for the moment, with the current infrastructure to generate SPDX, we don't have this. So we, we would need like an SPDX package together with the, uh, as a dependency to the update uh, that would update the SPDX for the image. But the, the way the uh, SPDX is generated for the moment is like not supporting the, this, this way of, of working. So that's a known issue. I uh, hope we can address it in, 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 in the next um, months or years. Because, yeah, of course, if you use the binary distributions, you want XPDX to be updated as well. Uh, so what to remember? Uh, so Open Embedded and Yocto have always been able to generate binary distributions, like Angstrom. And thanks to the funding from the STF, uh, the Yocto project is making progress towards being able one day to release its own uh, auto-built binary images, like directly from the auto-builder, and the corresponding packages package feed so that the users could actually get started with those ones. And that will, as I said, make it easier to get started with the Yocto project without having to compile from source. So and enjoying the efforts of the project and now that we have a lot of big testing infrastructure, uh, we, could, we, we are getting closer to being in a position to do that. But of course, yeah, we, we need extra funding from uh, project members typically uh, to, uh, to make progress in this direction. That's still a lot, a lot of work to, to to, to implement that, and we don't want to to make the our, our beloved maintainer crazy, so we we can commit to, to to doing that for the moment, right? So, okay, some key features for about like as a summary for uh, binary distros, you need to to choose a package format through package classes. A set um, package management, you add package management to your image with uh, adding a, a package management to extra image extra features. No extra image features. You generate the index with a uh, bit -bake package index. You have to start a, a, a local PR server, typically with PR server host. Uh, you could specify an upstream server if you want, like using this advanced feature, or, or start a custom PR server with bit -bake PR server. That's the main things to remember from a technical perspective. Uh, some useful, res useful resources about this project. Uh, there's a wiki page about the, the effort, the recent efforts and the achievements. There's, of course, the Yocto project manual uh, talking about that. That doesn't uh, uh, include the latest features yet. That's, that's on me. <laughs> so I need to submit patch, patches to the documentation for, the, for this. Uh, quick image credits here for the images I chose. And I wanted to thank you. <laughs> thank you. And yes, special thanks to Richard and Bruce. Uh, Bruce is here, right? Yeah, thanks, Bruce, for helping with this project. Um, and yeah, that's my email address for, for comments, questions. Uh, we can have com comments too. Uh, please test and contribute to improvements. That would be that will help help us. And the slides are available here. Yep. Yep. So, any questions? Just please mention the buff. Oh yeah. So there's a buff at 2 p.m. Yocto buff, Yocto Anoe buff at 2 p.m. Uh, a good place to be if you want to discuss your needs and also have a good time uh, with yeah. other Yocto users. Anybody? Anybody use? If someone needs a markup. Oh, yeah. So you, you can ask the question and I, re I will repeat. Um, historically, upgrading between package feeds generated with different Yocto releases has often, often been broken. Have you had, I haven't tried it in the last you know, five years or so. Have you had any luck with that? Uh, yeah, I think. Well, I didn't test thoroughly, but kind of started it. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so the question was, can you update an older version of Yocto with uh, recent feeds? Uh, 
seemed to work from what I tested, but the tests were not uh, extensive. Tim, any question? Oh, no. There's one back there. Oh, yeah. Yes, please, Salah. Right. Ah, because the question is uh, to update a package in the SDK. Uh, I don't, I haven't explored this, so no, I don't have any answers. Uh, maybe some people do. Oh, sorry, I can't answer this one. Chris? Hi, thank you, Michael. Um, quick question then about atomic updates. What happens if you get a power down while you're doing an update? Ah, yeah. Uh, are the package management uh, tools uh, robust or? No. no? <laughs> well, what happens with uh, desktop distros when this happens? It, it breaks. If you, if you get a power, if you're doing uh, a, a, a apt update on Ubuntu or Debian, whatever, and power down, it breaks. Mm. You, you break your system pretty so, much. As we're using the same source, uh, I guess it will, they will break as well. Yeah, that's, that's something to be addressed. What, so what was the question? Can you, you mix? mix A, B uh, updates with packets management so that you update uh, the B Ooh, side that's, and then... So the idea was we has to mix A, a B updates plus... Yeah, I had a customer asking for this, but that sounds really weird. Yeah, do uh, really but probably doable, but... Okay, so Yosef says don't do it because... That's no nobody that does that, or it's uh, or maybe you do, but it's complicated. Oh yeah, more questions. Thank you very much for the slides and the hard work that you've put there. So you mentioned that the next step would be eventually if there is um, further funding to have uh, right. a public uh, fee. So any Yocto user can do this uh, quicker with right. some yes. so the, uh, Yocto what's, project. What's the roadmap for this? Uh, there's no no plan so far. So uh, Richard expects to have like more people testing what we've done so far and getting involved and proposing patches. So um, he, he doesn't want to commit to, to do those things because otherwise, yeah, people will really start to expect those things to be available. But if, if that, we, we need more contributors, so that's the main thing. Uh, as soon as we have contributions and people testing and proposing contributions, then we have a chance to make this happen. Okay. Yeah, come on. Would it make sense to extend this to have the Linux kernel upgrade or other components? Uh, yes, I think so, because the, updates, uh, uh, the kernel can be updated to packages, so that, that applies. Okay, yep, so sure. the same as, I don't know, firmware, like you boot ARM trusted yeah. firmware? I mean... Yeah, that's, that, that I don't know. Uh, maybe, Bruce, you can, you, you can comment. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll comment. Uh, well, on the package updating the kernel, it depends and, on and your BSP <laughs> and your board, whether or not <clears throat> that's an operation that will work, so... Uh, how does that scheme compare to OS3 or uh, Mentor? Say that again? How does that scheme compare to OS3 and Mentor? Ah. Um, so could you use them both? Um, yeah, no idea. I, I would say they're mostly orthogonal. So Why? You, you don't com combine this because there, there should be one source of truth. Why? Um, Michael, I need to hijack for one minute. Please. Hopefully, everybody in this room knows this. I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but, but I, I'm speaking from as a the community talking. manager. Hopefully, everybody in this room understands that just having RPMs in Yocto does not mean you can Red Hat, uh, you can add Red Hat mm. repositories to your Yocto images. Having Debian images does not mean you can use Debian package feeds in your <laughs> Yocto builds. Well, I, I trust everybody of you having attended this 
high-level conference that you are aware of this. <laughs> but I am, like I said, I have had a lots of pain explaining this to people who are just entering the Yocto journey. So, Michael allowed me to hijack this. This is for the people who are watching this in the future somewhere on YouTube, thinking that it will give them the opportunity to inject Debian into Yocto. <laughs> no, it is not possible. Right. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks. And, and that, that's exactly the reason why in our prototype uh, specifications we will support IPK because we don't want to have dumb users trying to install DEB or RPM from other distributions. Yeah. So it's time. Oh, we are over time. So thanks. Uh, we, we, can, we can discuss after that. Right. Thank you again.